Well, thank you very much for inviting me today. And I'm here to present the ReGreen project, which is a Horizons 2020 project. Uh, it's the aim of it is to foster nature-based solutions for equitable green and healthy urban transitions in Europe and China. And the cities we're working with, as you can see on the maps, are Shanghai, Beijing, and Ningbo in China. And in Europe, we're working with Aarhus in Denmark, Paris region in France, and Velika Gorica in uh, Croatia. Uh, the objectives of ReGreen are many, and one is um, to share knowledge and evidence on benefits of NBS for urban challenges and develop and to test tools that guide and design and plan NBS. And we're also working to consolidate business and investment models for NBS, but the particular part I'm going to talk about today is the aim to promote um, NBS awareness and education governance and planning. And in this, we have a work package uh, five that is focused on education, awareness, and participation. And within this work package, there are four particular tasks. They're actually quite different, so I'm going to run through them um, each at, <laughs> alone. So the first one is on children and nature, and this is about cultural notions of children and nature. And the idea here is to develop understanding of diverse relationships between children and nature, because they're not the same in all settings. Their children have, many, have different lives and they're very different kinds of natural surroundings in which they live. So the questions here are how do physical environments and life worlds impact children's interaction with the natural surroundings? And another question is how are people imagining uh, nature and children such that they institute particular practices and particular institutionalizations in the different sociocultural contexts? Um, so the point here is that context matters and we need to ask which children are we talking about and what and how are we thinking about nature? What kind of nature is out there for children to interact with? And another part of this is to look at the difference between the ideals and the realities of children's lives. And I've used the pictures below to show you many of the idealistic pictures of children in nature versus the everyday pictures here on the right, showing where children play in a particular park or in the backyard courtyard. So that's one of the tasks. The second task is working on um, developing technological learning tools. And we have two different projects going here. The first is about um, creating field eBooks for eco and climate explorers. And this is targeted for fifth and sixth graders, and the aim is to promote physical and cognitive engagement with nature and reflection on MBS. And it has a three-step um, version. First, the children go out and explore their local environment. Then they work with the material to make an e-book in English, and then they share this e-book with children in the other cities. And hopefully the children in the other cities will share their books back. So it has a cultural exchange um, part to it as well. Um, here you can see that children choose an avatar as they're not allowed to put their own pictures in the books and there's different pages. Um, and it's focusing on ugly outdoor places as well as the places that children love best. And there's quite a few um, different uh, protocols in this project. If anyone is interested in looking more into it, they're using the, um, sorry about this, they're learning using the Book Creator app. Um, things are flying around here. And uh, if you'd like to contact Gertrude Espersen, who's working in Denmark, uh, she's interested in testing the material and following the process. The next technological project is a digital educational platform for enhancing school children's awareness and understanding of NBS. And this is an interactive protocol called Greenopolis and where children follow an e-body to explore solutions to climate challenges. And it's targeting children from eight to 12. There's a digital platform and a set of exercises that can be used outside in urban nature as well. This will be launched by ReGreen in early 22, and the contact person on this is Stina Kondrup, um, 
at the address that you can see here. Then we turn to a citizen science project that is being um, run by the uh, Museum of Natural History in Paris. And it's seen as a step toward understanding nature-based solutions as learning about nature in general and running these um, protocols to collect data for the Virginie Nature École program, but also for the Museum of Natural History. So the children use the protocols to collect data, which they send in, and then these data are put on interactive maps by the museum workers or the museum employees. You can see some of the protocols here, an example, they, they are both in French and English at the moment, and there's talk of translating them into Danish and Croatian as well. So the protocols and identification tools are all set up and you can collect data around your schoolyard mostly. Um, in the different schools, what are you seeing? The children have put out bird feeders to attract birds to see whether there are more birds in the green areas or whether a lot of birds come to the gray areas, the paved areas. And they're using the data to implement actions to promote more wilderness using wild and local plants and creating new habitats for biodiversity. The other citizen participation project is working with walkable floor maps being created by our partners in Germany. Uh, we're using these as interactive democratic learning tools uh, where we're collaborating, we're creating collaboration between researchers, planners, schools, youth council, nature guides, and neighborhood organizations. And these maps are aerial photos taken from satellite images. They're three by five meters, and they're rather static, and you can walk around on them, making them at different scales. On these maps, we put dynamic QR codes in which anyone, basically the, the municipality or children or citizens or organizations can uh, scan in stories, videos, photos, activities, their issues and concerns with respect to nature-based solutions in particular parts of the city. We're running a pilot project on this in Aarhus in Denmark and collaborating on design and usage. And we see it as an interactive learning process for all involved. And you can see the contact people here, Jeppe Lesu and Sally Anderson, myself, if you have any further questions. The final project is about co-creating urban nature with children, at first mapping and then co-creating. And this is um, set up by the Elnarp Landscape Laboratory in Sweden. And the laboratory is 17 hectares and it's all different kinds of environments um, set up and the ch they're inviting children in to play in these environments and to see how the children um, play. So they're doing an inventory of the ecological content of the landscapes and then an inventory of the affordances, affordances to play and learning. And the aim is to identify play biotopes to um, address the ecological value of these and how that is associated with play affordances. Um, and the distribution of play biotypes is a part of the site's overall layout and composition that accommodate bonds to place and mobility. So they're looking at children's place attachment, the way they move through landscapes. And as you can see here, they have the opportunity to create particular kinds of play, bio, play biotopes um, for playful mobility, as well as you can see in this picture here, collecting all kinds of things as small children or smaller children are want to do. And you can see that this is aimed at the moment on preschool children and first the first grades of primary school. So they're attending to the children's actual use of the place and then put, trying to make different um, interventions in the landscapes to facilitate children's appropriation of place. And here you can see just the children are playing. Here they put out particular boxes for sitting on or for to help for climbing. They leave things around for the children to see if they'll play with them or not, adding and subtracting from natural settings, but basically, basically involving children in change in landscape laboratories and classrooms, schoolyards and local neighborhood settings. So the aim of this is to um, 
take the knowledge created here and use it to um, make better playgrounds and better parks and cities for children. Uh, the contact people here are Frederica Mortensen and also Sang Ode. And uh, if you have any more questions, please do get in touch with them. So thank you very much for listening today. And I'd just like to uh, express my appreciation to SchoolNet and to the, um, uh, <laughs> the organization that promoted Let Nature Be a Solution and to hope that uh, if anyone has any more questions about the Regreen project to get in touch. So thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.